Good morning, this is Chef Alessandro. Today I want to talk to you about the slow food movement and how you can eat good, clean, and fair food. There's a website in different languages. It's uh, slowfood.com, but you can read in Italian, French, Spanish, etc. You can donate money or you can get involved yourself and become a volunteer. Um, today I will pick from my slideshow and I'll give you a quick uh, mission statement, some history, etc. So the slow food has the objective to promote the civil rights and live the meal, okay? In Italy, we say we don't eat to live, but we live to eat. So take your time to sit down at the table with family and friends. We don't age at the table. Um, and particularly, this is a response against the fast food restaurants uh, gaining popularity over in Italy and in Europe. So what is the slow food movement? It started in Italy in Bra and uh, it's led by Carlo Petrini, its founder. Um, it's a growing loosely structured social political coalition of 100,000 paying members in 130 different countries. And they de are devoted to promote good, clean and fair food. What does that mean? It means uh, good food because it has to be tasty, okay? It has to be, it has to be local, it has to be nutritious and most importantly it has to be seasonal also clean food uh, means that it has to be produced with any toxins uh, without pesticides or genetically modified and especially the gmos are very uh, bad for your health fair food what does that mean that means that it's made under fair conditions for both the farmers the workers and the environment uh, also without any speculations made by the laws of business, uh, thus you know, giving the fair prices for consumers all year round. This is Carlo Petrini, its founder. Uh, fast facts about Petrini, uh, again he was born in the province of Cuneo in the northwest of Italy, Piedmont, uh, and he started this cultural movement in the 80s against the first fast food that opened in Rome on the near um, Crosses from the Spanish steps. So it wasn't just uh, a punch in the eye for the Italian cuisine, but it was also for the architecture, because you can see these two big neons in front of this. You can expect a reaction from the Italian people. So uh, moving on real quick, uh, why Carlo Petrini? Well, he was already involved in writing about food in particularly with the Gambero Rosso, which is the most important magazine for Italian food. Okay. And they also analyze uh, wine as well. They uh, been a guide for over 2,350 producers of wine with 20,000 uh, wines uh, reviewed yearly. Okay, he's also the founder of a college, of a university. There's a University of Gastronomic Science, and there are, they have two campuses. One is in Emilia Romagna, and one is in Piedmont, Palencio, and the other one is in Colonia, in Parma. Um, the role of education, uh, uh, we really want to change. Noi vogliamo veramente trasformare. Uh, is it possible to change everything through education? Uh, I say yes. Here I have a few quotes from Marx and Gramsci and people that want to know but do not have the means. And if they know, uh, then they appreciate, which is why I'm trying uh, to teach you this today. Okay. Does education change society? I say yes. How can education uh, of self and others change food in society? Well, by touching all ages on topics related to food production, biodiversity, uh, use of senses to better experience the food. Um, and in fact, my advice is to take your time to eat and use minimum quantity of alcohol so you don't alter your senses. Uh, cultural education, know the traditions of your area. I know in the United States, people move constantly, but if you take the time to understand what are the local uh, tr culinary traditions, then you can absorb them uh, with yourself and make them yours, part of yourself. Revitalizing the knowledge about the pleasure around the table. So going back to what it means to sit down with your family and friends or uh, just with your spouse, or just uh, even alone, don't sit in front of the TV, just sit down at the table to enjoy the meal and talk about what you're eating, okay, as many times as you can during the week. 
uh, fight against uh, the GMO scientists. Uh, Petrini, Carlo Petrini, the founder, is constantly fighting against the scientists who are genetically modifying food and animals. Um, uh, in fact, examples is of uh, Petrini's philosophy is the opposite of the American scientist Norman Burla, uh, who, be, who became the Green Revolution, won the Nobel Prize. I mean, although Burla's intentions were to save lives in the Third World uh, countries uh, by creating crops that would yield more uh, with less energy, we, are, we also know that this uh, GMO corp, uh, corn and uh, other grains are not good for you because they're not in, in nature. They're not found in nature and they will generate a lot of diseases. Um, and also, you know, to the development of uh, hybrid uh, seeds and certain synthetic fertilizers and pesticides they give to the farmers. Um, uh, well, but unfortunately, his intentions did not stop in Mexico, Pakistan, and India. I'm talking about Norman Borland here. You know, he was trying to give the opportunity to third world countries to eat more but and to develop, but those um, technologies didn't stop there. They came back to the United States and to the Western world where we already have food. We don't need GMOs and to survive. We're... We have the technology to farm our lands uh, without any speculation, okay? So, Carlo Petrini is trying to stop this. Uh, why is Italy the homeland of the slow food movement? Well, when it comes to food, there's no distinction between a farmer and an office clerk. Pretty much everyone knows how to eat good, what good food tastes like. Um, most people who have a little bit of land behind their house will spend evenings and weekends maintaining a vegetable garden. It's normal to be almost self-sustainable. And I'll talk to you later about an ordinary life of a person, just like my dad. Okay, uh, the passion for taste. Uh, throughout the use of natural ingredients in their recipes, you can develop a passion for your taste. You don't need a lot of sauces, a lot of seasoning. If you have an ingredient, raw ingredient, you start with something that's already good, it's very simple to cook it and make it tasty. Agriturismo. Agriturismo literally means uh, a, a, it's a business. It was a barn, a farm that is venturing into a tourist uh, attraction. Uh, it can be a, a bed and breakfast. It can be a, a small uh, restaurant in the middle of the countryside. But before the slow food movement, where the farmers will have to turn a barn and an old mansion into a restaurant and using products that they made right there and then. So it was local and seasonal. In Italy, this battle has been fought by uh, small communities and local politicians that usually don't have that much power. So I give you two examples. One is Altamura and the other is the Forte dei Marmi. Okay, Altamura, which is also called the city of bread, is the place where the only, the first and probably the only McDonald's went out of business. So imagine that they were able uh, the citizens were able to sabotage and McDonald's and make him go out of business. So that's a good uh, result. The other example is Forte dei Marmi in Tuscany, where ethnic cuisines have been banned as a result of local politics uh, to hold against the globalization and incursion of corporate restaurants. So in Italy, uh, you may find that funny, but McDonald's is considered a, uh, an, ethnic, uh, an ethnic cuisine, okay? So by banning them, they're not able to open any more restaurants in there. Uh, in both cases, one in the south and one in the north, uh, the local people were trying to protect the value in their culture by avo avoiding the occupation of modernization for higher profits at the cost of quality of health, okay? So uh, don't get this uh, uh, information wrong. We're not against McDonald's or against globalization. We're against corporations that are trying to get us sick for their profits. Okay? So, this is the vegetable garden of my dad. He has this garden all year round. He grows tomatoes, leeks. He has 300 different species of vegetables all year round. And it's pretty much self-sustainable. He uses every single inch of the, uh, of the land. And uh, without very uh, a lot of expenses, so he doesn't use any pesticides, or he knows 
what to grow next to each other. So they, they help uh, each plant helps the other one with the uh, nutrition and with the bugs. One bug keep one plant keeps the bug away from the other, and vice versa. Okay, the key elements for great quality uh, fruits and vegetables are a kilometer zero. Uh, zero miles, so no uh, very, very local, okay? Minimum transportation, no transportation for the food. Uh, the meat, uh, the butcher cuts it in front of you, of the buyer, and only what it's ordered. Otherwise, the juices are lost in the packaging, and it's faster when it's pre-packed, but, um, but the pad, basically, it's holding all the goods, all the flavor. And that's where you have to use a lot of seasoning, a lot of sauces to get some taste uh, and some flavor off of them. Milk in the cheese. The mold actually protects the cheese. I know here uh, the mold has been banned and this is why some French cheeses are illegal to import. But uh, when it's only on the outside, this mold is actually protecting uh, the cheese. And... Um, and sometimes it's also healthy for the bacteria for your digestion. Uh, but I'm not going to get into that. No corporate farming. Uh, what does that mean? That uh, uh, corporate farming, you know, they change the law and the economy of uh, an area because they have the power to do that. So if we avoid the corporate farming, then we are good. A constant improvement in research of animals with the purest blood. Uh, in other words, wolves' ancestors have never been exposed to chemical contaminations or hormones. Uh, the seeds for your veggies. The seeds have to be pure and never had been genetically modified. Okay? Farmers have manually selected the best animals for, uh, or seeds for, the, for, for improvement. So manually versus genetically uh, selection. The right preservation, fresh versus frozen, or dried versus canned, etc. Uh, processing, for example, the bread made by big chains of grocery stores are um, use flour at a low cost. They have been not selected. Um, okay, natural fertilizers, uh, fertilizers, example composts. Uh, that's a natural fertilizer, and the chemical one is absorbed by the plant, and therefore you eat it as well. When, the, when you use the chemicals in the, in the land, it goes through the plant and therefore it's with the meal. So food activism means that uh, um, this slow food is the largest in the world. And the slow food is an, uh, the avant-garde of a global movement. Uh, U.S. Food uh, Corp started in 2011 uh, by slow food activists. That's another, uh, another good movement. And it has a hands-on on nutrition education. Uh, okay, so it's uh, built in 10, um, 10 school gardens, uh, etc. Here's the website. You can take a look at it later if you would like. Uh, so, uh, Mercati della Terra. It literally means mar markets of the earth. Uh, this is a way of for slow food members to promote healthy food and education, the same event. So the, really the hands-on. Now we're getting into the specific. Now we're getting into, all right, how can I participate? How can I find this? And this is one of the ways to do it. Uh, farm visits. Uh, you can uh, go on the side farm, educations for school, mostly how they raise the cows, how they produce wine and cheese. Um, dinners and groups uh, like uh, we did for the college around here. Uh, food contests. Ordinary people participate with food prepared based on their fam from their family recipes. Uh, the audience have the chance to learn about food in their culture. Uh, L'orto scolastico means uh, the school garden, the vegetable garden, uh, where the students of every age have hands-on experience and they know how to farm and how to keep uh, uh, the good food coming. Okay, uh, the slow food movement, in fact, uh, the money uh, the people donate are used also to sponsor these activities. Um, uh, one example is in the middle school, Padova. Padova is my town where parents uh, built greenhouses and teachers. Okay, Grupo da Cristo Solidale, so it's a solidarity buying group. Uh, it's another important movement. Um, Terra Madre, again, is a biannual meeting. Uh, Productions of unused foods. Um, an example is the grapes that in the past have not been used to make wine because it was not sellable. So we want also to promote the 
uh, biodiversity. And this is a story of an ordinary life, like my dad, Luigi Spinello, his vegetable.